What up, ectomorphs? This is Ephraim B. Martin of Too Legit To Quit Fitness dot com. Hope all is well. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm back and uh, making my fourth video. Um, just wanted to uh, continue to send out love to all those ectomorphs that are out there um, in the gym doing their thing. I'm receiving some very good emails from you guys and some uh, good questions. So I appreciate the support, okay? So keep doing what you're doing, ectomorphs. Um, today, uh, I'm going to address an email that, uh, several emails actually, that I, I received uh, through my website from ectomorphs regarding science versus training. Okay, this is the email I want to read to you. It's from Michael M. Okay, Michael M. has a question for me. He says, hello Ephraim, thank you for your videos for ectomorphs. Would you please explain science versus training in the gym for ectomorphs? I am 24 years old and I am an ectomorph. I am tired of my generation of young people loading all these videos up to YouTube and not knowing what they are talking about. I've watched your videos. You are truly an inspiration for me. Your videos show you training your clients and you know what you are doing because you have been training for 22 years and you have the education behind your training which is impressive to someone like me who needs substance not talk. Thank you Ephraim. Much love to you. Michael M. So thank you Michael M. for uh, taking the time out once again to uh, send me an email and um, you know uh, one additional information you know in regards to uh, ectomorphs. So, I'll start off by saying this. Uh, let me put my phone down. When it comes to science versus training, um, you know, when we're talking about ectomorphs, I believe this. Uh, when it comes to the science, is science important? Well, you know, science is available. How important it is, it, you know, it's going to depend on the individual. Uh, I'm not going to knock the science of, um, of bodybuilding. I'm not going to knock the science of nutrition. But when it comes to training, training is all about practical application, point blank period. It's all about applying what you learn and practicing what you learn, okay? So, um, like I said, I'm not going to knock the science of bodybuilding or the science of um, nutrition. But... One of the things that I see, you know, since I, I, I've been training for a very long time, 22 years, you know, I'm 48 years of age. So I personally have never um, listened to the science of bodybuilding or the science of uh, nutrition. Because as an ectomorph myself, I've, what I've learned over the last 22 years is to apply the practical application of what I do to my physique. Okay. I'm all about training um, and for me science versus training can become kind of tricky depending on who you talk to okay so I'm all about 100% training point blank period I don't care whether you're 100% natural um, I don't care whether you use drugs I'm all about training I, I, I've trained over the years with some of the best physiques in, in the business of bodybuilding and I've learned from some of the best physiques in bodybuilding that were 100% natural and who've done drugs. I mean, that's the nature. If, you, if you're going to be in bodybuilding, that's the nature of bodybuilding. You have natural athletes. You have athletes that take drugs. That's just the nature of bodybuilding. So if that's something you're going to aspire to do, um, you need to understand if you're going to get into um, bodybuilding on any level, that's what you're going to be exposed to. Um, when you are 100% natural, it doesn't make you less of a competitor to those who are using drugs. So, um, you know, I don't get into, you know, who's using drugs, who's not using drugs. Um, to me, it doesn't matter. I, I really don't care. Personally, I don't care who's using drugs because it doesn't affect me one way or the other. Um, I'm interested in training. Okay, so for me, the training aspect of maximizing your, your physique is important to me. So I'm interested in the training. As far as the science, um, I really don't pay attention to the science because 
um, you know, like, like the email said, this young generation to me, uh, this young generation is, is all about quoting what the science says and what the science looks like. And, you know, um, as I continue to go through YouTube, I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube, but as I continue to go through YouTube and I'm seeing a lot of the videos that are being uploaded by a lot of these young kids, um, it's just very interesting for me because I, I come from the old school. And the old school is you go to the gym, you train, and you keep training, and you make your physique better, and you eat correctly, and you, uh, you know, you you you're a student of your art. You're 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 you're, you're a student, and you don't want to become a teacher until you're ready. So I'm old school, um, and I I believe that you know. So I come from a school where you're 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 a student. I continue to be a student today. Let's talk about the science. Uh, the science to me, specifically with this generation, uh, I, I believe that there's just a, a, you know, there's a lot of young kids out there that are very misinformed. Um, it's perfectly okay to, under, you know, to, to, to read about the science. It, it's good. I think you need to become knowledgeable. But you can't become so knowledge of, knowledgeable you become stupid. And what I mean by that is, you cannot read so much that you don't apply what you're reading, but then you generalize and you make a generalization uh, across the board when you're comparing or talking about someone's physique, for instance. In my gym, you hear so many conversations from young people about supplementation and what to take and what not to take. And, you know, um, if you do this or if you do that, if you cut here, if you bulk here, this is what your physique's going to look like. So it's, it's a lot of misinformation. And, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but the bottom line is it comes down to what are you willing to apply to your own physique to make your own physique better? Um, and how are you going to maximize your physique? Okay? That's what it comes down to me. Um, when you talk about the science, um, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, years ago when I first started training, the science of bodybuilding said you should not do behind the neck presses, okay? Um, and I know for a fact after 22 years of training in the gym, doing behind the neck presses is the only movement I know for ectomorphs, for a fact, because I am an ectomorph and I've been doing behind the neck presses for 22 years. That's a direct movement that will totally shape your rear delts, okay? There's other movements that will work with your rear, rear delts, but behind the neck presses are the only direct movement I know as for ectomorphs that are going to build your rear deltoids. Now the science says don't do behind the neck presses because your clavicle, which is from here to here, and your rotor cuff, okay, which is in your shoulders, is subject to injury. So if I had listened to the science um, my rear delts, my deltoids would not look the way that they do today at 48 years of age, okay? So I don't listen to a lot of science because a lot of the science, they're researchers and they don't apply what they're saying don't do to their own lives and to their own selves. So I can't follow someone like that that is unwilling to be a human guinea pig themselves. I got issues with that. If you are so educated, right, and you're going to be giving out information for the masses, you must be able to prove what you're giving out, okay? And if you can't prove that, I'm not going to listen to you because you can't teach me anything. That's just me. That's my opinion, okay? You could be so scienced out that you miss your point. You could be so scienced out that you give misinformation. So is it misinformation to do behind the neck presses? Well, I'm not necessarily saying it is. I just don't want to pay attention to it because I know even today I could still do 225 pounds behind my neck, behind the neck presses. I still do those today. I've never been hurt. I've never been injured in the gym. So I've proven that theory wrong myself. I have, okay? That's just one example. Um, I'm going to give you an example when it comes to training how I've learned to become a much better trainer. I'm going to give you an example of what I've done. 
um, besides being in the gym for 22 years, I have an extremely open mind. I can learn from anyone. I can learn from someone 18. I can learn from someone 24. I can learn from someone 30. But I'm very, very cautious of the information that I allow for learning to. I am. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I did personally as a, as, a, as a fitness trainer from 2005 to 2010. Well, let me, let me tell you this first. I have three trainers that I, that I, that I admire and I follow. There's many that are out there, um, but these three trainers that I'm getting ready to name have really made an impact on my life as far as training, okay? Um, the first trainer I want to talk about and who's a total inspiration to me is Charles Glass. You rarely hear about Charles Glass. Um, Charles Glass, is, is he's worked with the best physiques um, with the IFBB pros, um, amateurs, on every level. He has trained Flex Wheeler. He's trained, um, um, you know, um, he's, he's trained Sean Ray. He's, he's trained the best bodybuilders, period. And this is a man that goes, you know, you'll never hear about Charles Glass because, you know, bodybuilders are not accepted in the world of fitness and health. They just aren't, you know, they don't want to see bodybuilders, you know, working with celebrities. They, 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 they want to discredit that. So Charles Glass, by far, one of the top trainers on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Robbie Robinson, 66 years of age. Him and Charles are in the same category. Um, Charles is up there in age as well. Um, Robbie Robinson comes from the old school. He came from, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and the pumping iron um, um, generation. If, if, and, and, and Robbie Robinson today at 66, if you look at his physique, he's about 205 pounds. Phenomenal. Um, really an inspiration to me as well. Uh, another trainer out there today is Lee Labrada, um, one of the smallest competitors ever in the IFBB. Um, Lee Labrada probably weighed about 180 pounds whenever he competed against, the, you know, the IFBB pros. Had an incredible physique. You know, Lee Labrada is maybe five foot five, 180 pounds was incredible. Um, I want to throw out another name as far as training goes. Uh, there's a brother out there today by the name of C.T. Fletcher. Um, he's gone from uh, being a power lifter to a bodybuilder. Once again, this is a man that, if you look at his videos, I know a lot of people are offended because he cusses a lot or what have you. I don't care about any of that. I'm all about training. His training regimen is just off the hook. And a lot of the young people he brings into his gym um, in Long Beach, California, um, you know, he's about training. So I want to surround myself with 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 athletes that are about training I don't care whether or not you're natural or whether or not you use drugs I don't care because at the end of the day it comes down to training point blank period that's what it comes down to um, so those individuals that I just named um, have inspired me to become better and to work on my own craft as a as a as a fitness trainer okay um, I've never been complacent. I never will become complacent because, like I said, I can learn from anyone. Um, let me tell you what I did, though. From 2005 to 2010, um, I would go to Venice Beach, California every year from 2005 to 2010. And the reason I went to Venice Beach, California, I I've met Charles Glass and I've met Robbie, Rob Robbie Robinson on one occasion. They wouldn't remember me from Adam. Um, but the reason I went out to Venice Beach every year between 2005 and, and 2010, I spent two days at the Mecca at Gold's Gym. And the reason I did that is, is because I, I learned directly from Charles Glass and Robbie Robinson. So since I couldn't get them to come to me, I had to go to them. So what better way to get knowledge and, and, and a further understanding of the human anatomy than from these great champions, right? Um, Charles Glass, his record speaks for himself as a competitor in IFBB, as a trainer. Like I said, he's trained the best IFBB pros. Um, and so I spent this time every year going to the Mecca uh, from 7 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening. I was a fly on the wall. 
and I took mental notes um, from these gentlemen and it, it was phenomenal to be able to watch them train the top athletes in in bodybuilding it, it just it blew me away literally blew me away and uh, you know doing that really has helped my own fitness training and and, and what I learned from from both um, Charles Glass and Robbie Robinson is I learned how to angle train so with my own clients and myself I, I apply angle training to my own training regimen and, I, and I, I learned that from them you know I started watching them you know in 2005 I was 40 years of age I'm now 48 so that was eight years ago you know I spent about five years out there so I learned a ton going to the Mecca and um, you know watching these these great um, champions and these great warriors so for me um, science versus training is very simplistic I don't confuse the two um, ectomorphs what I'm telling you is this whether you're an ectomorph mesomorph or endomorph it, it comes down to training um, we can compete with mesomorphs we can compete with with endomorphs uh, bottom line for me um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a masters um, you know bodybuilder now I mean I'm, I'm 48 years of age so I'm in the masters division and what I appreciate about the masters division is that these are, are men that have really put their time in the gym you know if you've been training in the gym over 20 years that really really says something and, and for me it says a lot you know uh, God has really blessed me he's blessed my body I've never been hurt or injured and um, that's because I respect the human anatomy I know what the body is capable of doing I've never been scared um, to learn from 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 the best and and I just believe if you want to be the best you got to surround yourself by the best so um, that's what I do and that's what I continue to do so um, all of the gentlemen that I just named you know uh, Charles Glass, Robbie Robinson, Lee Labrada and C.T. Fletcher um, they have all when it comes to training um, been instrumental in my training so um, ectomorphs I, I would encourage you to uh, once again I'm, I'm, I'm all about research as well I don't research to the point that I don't apply when I'm researching though and I think that's one of the most critical things with ectomorphs is because if you do go to YouTube you're gonna get all this crazy stuff you know young kids today on YouTube they can say whatever they want you know you can you can compete for two or three years um, start loading videos you, you can say whatever you want I mean you really can it's a free country you have freedom of speech you have freedom of, of, of expression um, I'm an old-school brother though I know what works uh, I know what has worked for me and I can't generalize and say well my specific training and everything I've done is gonna work for every ectomorph um, I'm at a point in my life at 48 years of age I volume train you know I don't do the crazy training regimens that I used to do when I was in my 30s you know I'm not doing the 1200 pound leg presses I'm not doing the you know the the 550 squats uh, I'm not doing the 315 um, incline you know um, presses I'm not I'm not doing any of, of a lot of that stuff that I did when I was younger because I now have mature muscle I had to do a lot of crazy stuff earlier in my in my career um, to get to where I'm at so I don't have any regrets but I've never been hurt I've never been injured I think that's very very important not many people can say that um, I can say that I've never been hurt or injured in the gym um, have I been lucky I'm sure I have to an extent but I'm very smart and I'm very aware of my environment every time I go in the gym it's safety first okay so I'm very aware of my environment when I'm in the gym and I don't take it lightly because you can get hurt you can get hurt bad so um, that's my uh, opinion on science versus training um, you know once again ectomorphs I want to encourage you to research okay and be very very careful of what you're researching and be very very if you use your common sense ectomorphs I, I cannot stress this en enough if you use your common sense you will be able to apply what makes sense to your very own physique I want to make that clear okay 
Use your common sense. There's no, there's no shortcuts. This generation to me is all about taking shortcuts. This generation to me is all about, you know, trying to compare their physique to the, to the next kid that's uploading the video. And, um, you know, YouTube, it's a great venue. Um, I think it's a great venue to help everyone from an instructional purpose. I, I think it's wonderful because you now have access. I didn't have YouTube when I was a kid. So you now have access to the world. Okay, but just be responsible for what you put out. That's all I'm saying. Be responsible and, and you need to understand you need to be held accountable for what you put out. Very important, okay? Um, so w w with that being said, thank you for your time. Um, it, it's always a pleasure speaking with uh, you ectomorphs. Um, I am an ectomorph. I'm down with the ectomorphs. So that's my focus is ectomorphs. And uh, once again, Michael M., thank you for your um, email. And hopefully, once again, I, I've been able to address and, and answer your questions. Um, as usual, please keep a brother in your prayers. And um, I'll holla at you the next time. Peace.